Hey, what's good family? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I personally like to set up my indicators. And in this video, I'm going to be using TradingView, but this is going to work pretty much on any trading platform that you use, whether it be Robinhood, Moomoo, Webull, Thinkorswim, anything like that. This is going to apply and transfer. So if that interests you, uh, keep watching. All right, now here we are taking a look at trading view. Um, this is typically how my charts look. Actually, I typically don't have all these on and sometimes I'll also have the volume on, but these for the most part, these are going to be the indicators I use. This is going to be kind of how my setup looks. So yeah, I don't usually have all these on at once, but I'm going to show you how you can set these up for yourself so you can use them and kind of turn them on and off whenever you want. All right, so first off, when it comes to the indicators and looking at them, um, I'm speaking for trading view, but if I want to get rid of these, um, I simply just kind of come up here, click on the trash can icon and notice the line just got removed. Uh, something else I can do is I can uh, see this orange line right here, this EMA. I can double click on it and Uh, I guess I guess that's just going to be for actually editing it. But yeah, you can double click on the indicator to edit it. And then uh, down here, looking at this, we got the RSI down here. If I want to edit that um, here. here, let me click on the line. All right. So you actually have to click on the line in there to edit it. Otherwise, it just makes that section bigger. But yeah, if you want to edit that, you can. And if I want to delete it and get rid of it. Once again, over here, there is a trash can. So I'm just going to click on that because we're going to add it later. Um, then we got these volume bars down here. Once again, you can edit them and kind of, uh, I, I've never edited volume bars, so I'm just going to leave that alone. And I'm just going to throw that in the trash as well. Then we got two more EMAs. Once again, trash, trash. All right. So now my chart is clear. We just see the the candles and whatnot. Um, you can see we got these different time frames. All right. So yeah, we're looking at a stock. We're looking at it on the charts. And if you're interested in figuring out how you can get your charts to look like mine, um, be sure to check out this video right here. But with that being said, let's actually get in and add some indicators now. All right. So first one we're going to look at and the one that's on my chart, the majority of the time is going to be, uh, we're going to add the EMAs. Uh, first I'm going to show you if you want to emulate what I'm doing. Um, if you're on the free version, trading view does work for free. Like you don't have to pay for trading view, but you're not going to have access to use as many trading or as many indicators as me. I think you can only do up to two while it's free. So you may have to be a little bit pickier. So, I'm going to show you how I would do it if this was free, if trading view, if I was using the free trading view. So first off, in order to search for the EMA or search for an indicator, you just, uh, in this instance, I'm looking for an EMA. So I would type in EMA. And then there are all these different versions of EMAs, different people have coded things. So if you have friends that have coded any kind of chart or anything, that's cool. Those are there. But um, you'll see right here, the one I like to use if I'm using the free one is going to be this 20, 50, 100, 200. And I'm going to show you exactly how I would personally set it up. So first off, we're going to turn that on. Uh, yeah, we're going to click on that. OK, and you'll notice I clicked on it like three times. So we got three of those set up. Uh, let me turn off the other one. All right. Now, when it comes to here, let's actually go to a lower time frame. All right. So coming back, taking a look at it, you can see we have four different lines. This specific indicator was coded this way. So yeah, you got, I believe the blue line represents the 200. The lighter blue represents the 100. This one represents the 50 and this one represents the 20. So now if you want to edit those, once again, double click, uh, and you can kind of change the color. So Indicate the ones I'm a fan of personally, like, yeah, I like having the 200 on there. 
Um, I would personally rather not have the 100 on there. I don't ever use that one. Um, I usually go for this kind of orange, maybe make it a little more vibrant. I'll probably turn up the opacity or turn down the opacity as well. And then I usually like to have my short one, a blue kind of like that. All right, so that's pretty much all I can do. This is how I would have it set. Now for me, I would probably like the closest one to the 13 EMA that I'm gonna use that you'll see a little bit later is gonna be this one. So me, this is probably how my chart would look the majority of the time, but it's gonna be a little bit off. It's gonna be a little bit different um, from what you wanna see. And I'll actually leave this here. I'll actually, here, let's make this like this color. All right, just so you can see how it's gonna compare. And, and just a fun fact, if you don't know what an EMA is, if you don't know how it's, uh, like what the difference in the number is. So this is the 20 EMA. And what an EMA does is take the last candle. So since this is a 20, it's gonna take the 20 last candles that have occurred. It's gonna take the price to average between them. And it's gonna give a little bit more weight to the last one since it's the exponential moving average. And that's how you get wherever the line is. So um, notice when it's further back over here, it's higher. And as it comes down, it's lower. So yeah, on those lower ones, that's how it is. All right, um, now I'm gonna show you, well, hold on. Before we get to my EMAs, um, I'm also gonna show you how to add the RSI because this is how I would have mine set up. I would have this um, like four kind of EMAs that I can turn on and off once again, double click. And if I wanna turn them on, I can turn them on. And the other indicator I would be using that was free is going to be, I'm gonna to go to type in RSI, which stands for Relative Strength Index. And um, what I personally like to do is double click on the line. And I like to get rid of this uh, yellow line and just click okay. And the way the RSI works is anything above 70 down here is considered to be overbought. Anything below 30 is considered to be oversold. Um, this because something is overbought or oversold does not mean um, it'll immediately go up or go down, but it's just something that tells you like, hey, it's in extreme areas and in time it's going to want to come back to normal. So if we actually look, there was a point in time when this was over here overbought and you can see, yo, it was way up here, but it kind of came up and kind of came down, but all this time from November, 2024, all the way to, I guess like the end of November, 2024, it was still considered to be overbought. Then it came over here, became oversold. Um, I usually like to, if I'm gonna do anything with these, usually it's gonna be above 80 for me and below like 20 for me if I'm gonna play the opposite direction. So I like the RSI to potentially look for re reversals. Now, with that being said, that's gonna, this is one I can use, whether it's free or the paid version. All right, now going on. So yeah, that's that's gonna be the extent of the indicators. And if you're curious about this line, um, that's just, if you're curious about this blue line, that's just a line I put in there. Let me clear that out. And uh, yeah, let me, uh, fix these EMAs again, or let me fix these EMAs again. So let me double click. Um, we're just gonna leave the pink one for now. And now I'm gonna add the EMAs that I personally use. So I'm going to come to indicators. I'm gonna type in EMA. And the ones that I use are just moving average exponential. So I have three of these that I use and I'm gonna show you exactly how I set them up. So I'm gonna click one, two, three. All right, so now you'll see over here, we have three EMAs. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click this one. First off, I wanna make this one purple. This one's gonna be my 200. Uh, so in order to change it, notice I was on style to choose the color, to change uh, what EMA we're using. 
right here where it says length. I'm going to change this to 200. And once again, uh, that 200 means it's factoring in the last 200 candles to give you that average price. So if we look, the 200 is way up here. Like there is a point in time when the 200 is way below. But uh, here, let me clear this too, because that's old. Yeah, there was a point in time when the 200 was way below, but now the 200 is way above. All right, so yeah, that the 200 is usually like kind of a stronger average. I um, mean, we usually like to make our way back to it. Uh, usually when you're trading below the 200, it's considered bearish. And whenever you're trading above it, it's considered bullish, kind of depending on what time frame you're on. Now going on, yeah, we got that one. For the 200 now i'm going to take a look at this one double click and i'm going to choose the color i like to make this one orange and i usually like to have this one as the 48. and once again um the length is referring to the amount of candles it's taking factoring in so i'm going to hit okay and now that 48 is over here so we got the 200 we got the 48 and there they are. That's kind of how they differ. The 48 is typically going to be closer to wherever the price is because it's factoring in the more recent candles, the 200, unless the stock just hasn't moved for a long time, is usually going to be further away. Now going on, uh, the last one that I'm going to add, double click, it's going to be the 13. And that's going to be the one that I like to make this kind of blue right here. Then I'm going to hit OK. And then kind of come in looking at it. Um, yeah, just kind of not paying attention to as much. I want to show you. So we have this kind of pink one that I told you is the one that I would use if I were on the free trading view. And then you have the one I use. So you can see kind of how they differ here. Let me clear out the other ones. Let me clear out the 48 and the 200. You can see they move uh, fairly close together. They kind of uh, kind of move in relation. So like if we were looking at something more popular, like maybe a Tesla, you can see it still kind of holds up the same. Like uh, if you're using it for resistance, there are instances where the blue line holds better. There are instances where the kind of pink line holds better. So when it comes down to it, um, no line is perfect, but they both have their benefits. So I'm going to clear this one off because I don't need it there, but I'm just going to delete it. And now uh, here we are back at the chart we were originally looking at. Um, this is typically how my charts looks the majority of the time I'm trading. Uh, I am, I just have the 13 EMA kind of visible and I have the RSI up and I will kind of, as I want more information, I'll shift through different time frames, see how things look as well as, uh, maybe I'll say, okay, what's the next EMA? And there's also a strategy with the crossing of the 13 and the 48, which is another video for another day. But um, that is pretty much how I set up my charts and how I look at it. If you enjoyed the video and learned anything, be sure to smash the like button. If for some reason you're new here and haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss any future content or live streams. And last but certainly not least, thank you so much for watching. Matthew Manuel signing off and I want to change your life.